final seconds. Okay, let's get started. Select the right scene. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so what are we doing today? I'm working on glowing telegram. Uh, hmm. I think it's probably it's it's nearly time. I think it's time to finally go back to the thing uh, that was really one of the first things <laughs> when I started streaming working on this project that we were going to do, which is to have like a, a UI that would let us um, basically do a chat GPT style um, description generation for videos. That was that was the whole thing, right? And then <laughs> getting uh, enough infrastructure to like be able to do the other things that I wanted to do is is occupied a lot of time. But I think maybe it's time to, to come back to this item. I did add in the uh, the project for glowing telegram this this one item called overall workflow. And so I just sat down this morning and kind of like, how do I envision this working? Not in a, you know, in a general, like you do this, you do this, you do this. And what are the sections of that? Like, what are the things that you would do in one go, right? So you would create the stream uh, record in, in really one of two ways, like ahead of time and then sync to Twitch or afterwards import it. Uh, we have the import part uh, mostly there. I'm not going to check these things off until we're really happy with, until I'm really happy with how everything is working. But uh, and then the next section is like ingest video, audio, and chat. So import local recordings. We're already doing that, um, but and and we have the ability to do these things, except for chat history. Um, like this workflow is not about the functionality. Okay, we have, you know, a thing you can click to do it, but rather it's gonna make more sense, right? If you imagine like a wizard, uh, like a, a UI, like dialogue or a series of things that take you through the workflow. Um, why, why do I need to, why do I need to go into the UI and like find the record and then go to transcript and click start transcribe. Why can't I like when I have this, like once the stream has happened that I have the video clips, what do I need to go here and like scan for clips and then go here? What do I need to do that in separate steps? Right. Um, versus like just kicking it all off all in one go. And so that's kind of uh, where I'm starting to think now that we have figured out how to do things and how things could work, how to like pull it all together. That's not to say that we've not, you know, what, what's what been done so far is good and useful, right? Because there'll be things where, oh, well, something failed or you want to retry, kind of more of an administrator interface, which is really what this looks like. But what I'm imagining is a set of pages outside of this UI, or it's more of like a, a wizard that's taking th taking you through steps to do things. And I'm kind of imagining they're kind of like, um, like this, this bit, uh, this bit, epitiz episodization is not a word, but uh, creating episodes from the streams, right, is, is a bunch of things. It's the, the biggest section because there's a lot going on there. And then, um, and then upload is kind of what we've already done. And I'm, I'm not sure if that will be any different other than like going and finding the episode and being like, okay, I'll we'll take these episodes and upload to YouTube. And that works as of uh, the other day. That part. So 
this is kind of the, the game plan for like the groupings of things and how things should come together into like an actual application um, in terms of like the, the, the user experience, I guess, is, is what I'm concerned about here. Um, and embedded in that, there's a, a thing that we've not really done yet, which is generate and iterate on video title, description, thumbnail, and tag. So the thumbnail part is something that we'll have to figure out how to do, <laughs> how to make that work. Um, you know, so generating the thumbnail will be interesting because I imagine this is something where probably, so here's what I'm ima imagining. And it, it goes back to this item over here. Add custom field in UI that opens a chat widget, takes the, uh, the uh, record and transforms it into a context for uh, GPT-4, right? So that kind of um, extracting information from like the stream record or the episode record, uh, episode records make sense in this context. Um, and, and creating that context and giving it to GPT and then giving an initial prompt and then being able to kind of iterate on that is is kind of the um, the target here. And then from there, we can do something like, um, think about like doing something similar for generating thumbnails, where we might, uh, we might do something, I'm not sure, not sure how that's gonna work exactly, because th there's different ways of doing thumbnails for videos, right? Where we could focus on taking like a card, like um, focus on uh, just like a static image and then you know, annotating it versus taking like an element from the video itself and and doing something with that. You know, th there's different possibilities, and I'm not, not exactly sure how one would give enough context to uh, automate that process. So I'm I'm gonna stop thinking about it for now, and we're gonna go and work on other things. Uh, so. We have the AI API from very early on. Was there something still in the front end, a component for interacting with it? Or did that not stick around? Timeline, thumbnail field, description. I'm gonna say no. So where, where is the, where, where are those files? I think they're in my old, uh, project. So hold on one second. New window. Okay, it over here. File. Open folder. Or maybe I'll get recent ones. File. Recent. Video processing tool. Is the folder that everything used to be in back before I moved everything inside of WSL. Lots of complaints. It's fine. I'm just trying to find <laughs> 45. 45 commits behind. All right, so it's been a while since I messed with uh, this version of things. But I think this folder also has the old video processing project. Here we go. Um, so this was the first version where I was messing around with a bunch of stuff in Python, uh, messing around with uh, a Django app. And I think somewhere in here is the, um, maybe it's inside of here. Hmm. Didn't I have a, uh, a React component? Chatbot. Chat. Oh, this was it. Okay, so we got a chat dialogue at TSX. So we're building a context in the front end. And then the 
idea is... Okay. Have that TSX? Yeah, so we have, we have a React component that has some props. Okay, so I think we can probably just take this component into uh, our project. And then what I'll do is I'll want to wrap this into a, like a React admin style um, something. How's that gonna work? Hmm. Right, so this takes a target. How long has it been since I've looked at this, this stuff? It's been a little while. Uh, so let's see, our component here. What are we doing with target? This is like an ID or something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're... We're just looking for an element by ID. And we're grabbing it. So I think the most important things here are like, I think it's gonna make sense for the UI element to have this internal state like this. Like this is kind of a freestanding thing, but like when you go into, um, let's, let's go into the UI and think about how this is being applied or will be applied. So if we go into, um, I don't know, random, episode that doesn't have a description, right? It's This is going to be interesting because the the record itself, like the episode record, doesn't have a lot of the metadata that we're interested in. Like, it doesn't have the transcript. Um, so we're going to have to, like, fetch that data as well. So I think in the short term, what I'm going to focus on doing is making a, like, a episode... How's that gonna work? So what I'm debating right now is between we could create a front end component that's specifically designed around um, basically like something that replaces description. Hmm. Hmm. Is that necessary? Let's do this. Let's not worry quite yet about integrating with React Admin in terms of like getting the data into the field. I think what I wanna do, if nothing else, is make like a, a chat widget thing that is activatable. And we can just drop a button to activate it and then it'll come up. Maybe it'll just be a dialogue. That's fine. Um, yeah, we can worry about the details of how exactly the UI should be. Um, I have a, a separate thing that I've been working on, actually. Um, because I've been thinking about wanting to try out Tailwind for doing UI stuff, because I've never really used that, but I keep on seeing stuff about it. Looks kind of interesting. Um, so I have a little other project where I'm essentially writing my own versions of the React Admin components that are specific to Material UI um, to use Tailwind instead, right? So there, it's not so much like to ever be a library, but it's something that theoretically, like if I made it as a separate repo, you'd be able to go and copy those components into your project and customize them. And then you're, you would swap out the imports, right? Instead of importing like text input or save button from React Admin, you would import import it from this set of components that you would copy in. Um, and they're, they're, they can't really be extensible um, because the, the, the whole idea is that you're really doing custom styling of all of the components using Tailwind. But um, at some point, you know, I may significantly change how the UI works on this, we'll see. 
Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, so I think I'm going to take some of this. Let's start with this part. Go back over to uh, the uh, current repo. And we'll go into front end. And uh, the, the components are all a mess anyway, but uh, we're, I'm just gonna call this chat dialogue. I think still. Now, do I wanna make a storybook story for this? We're not gonna be using CSS properties, so that's fine. Um, oh, that's interesting. Is this any good? <laughs> this this looks kind of similar to uh, the other thing, doesn't it? Well, we'll just copy the other one uh, in in a second. But uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Think about that for a second. So is the uh, I think this code is just directly calling out via fetch. Yeah, it's calling send messages, which is just calling the API. Hmm. If we I mean, and the, the API is very simple, right? We're just throwing, <laughs> we're throwing messages uh, into the body and sending it. But I think this, um, this component, I'm gonna take this really quick and we're gonna, we're gonna take this and, and kind of do, make some changes here. Because, yeah, I'm not worried about styling right now. In the short term, I'll probably go back and replace all of the this with like material UI styling uh, components. It's just, you know, even if I'm changing it later, it's easier, I feel it's easier to like maintain consistency and then <laughs> swoop through rather than having things be inconsistent and then having places missed later. Um, yeah, so anyway, so what I'm thinking here is that this API needs to change, right? So I don't want to pass an API or target. Instead, I want some other way of telling this how to interact with its, its context, which is a loaded term <laughs> in this context of uh, React stuff. Um, yeah, and we also have context in a, in a like a generative AI sense as well. Um, so two things, right? So we want to have something for this component to be able to call to interact with the backend. Um, so we can do on send. Send doesn't seem like the right word. What do we? Maybe and not, not submit either. <laughs> Maybe on chat. But of course, this is not a message. That's not what was being passed to um, to here. We have messages. That is a chat message array. At some point, I should figure out like this. This is how you make. This is how you make a. Um, 
type signature for a function, but for some reason it, it really objects to that. Yeah, there we go. So this function takes a list of chat messages and then resolves eventually to a, a new list, right? So this is like the, the context so far, and then this function that's being passed in in the props, we'll call the backend and the backend will return back um, maybe some of the context, maybe, you know, we throw away some of the older things, maybe, we'll see. Uh, and then the new message at the end. Uh, and it's like the GPT's response. Okay, and then um, the, the idea with the target was that when we click a button, use this message, we send the latest of whatever the content of the message that we selected is um, back to the, the thing that is using this component. Um, so we might just call that like on change. Right, but we don't want, uh, it's not even gonna be a whole chat message, is it? No, it's just the content, which is a string. Yeah, it doesn't like that, right? Yeah, parameter has a name but no type. No, it has, it has a type but no name. ESLint is, I think, maybe misconfigured. change message.content and then down here on submit we want to do this but we don't need to pass API that's like abstracted away from our concern here and then um, right area. Oh, it's uncontrolled right now. It's an uncontrolled um, UI element. So we're just copying whatever events at target.value is. I guess that's fine because we don't have anything else setting message content. Right. Okay. And then we export that. So why did I why did I make all the changes to the kind of this, the interface of this component? It's not just because it was different, <laughs> although that can be a reason. But thinking about how I want to be able to test this, how I want to be able to interact with this, like in a storybook story, and how I want to be able to integrate this into other things, um, this kind of interface where I'm not as an example. Right, so if it's directly calling fetch, then it's not going through the data provider and all the React admin stuff. It's just its own thing. What if at some point I roll in authentication and authorization into uh, the data provider? Am I gonna reproduce that functionality inside of here as well? Am I gonna have it in two places that, uh, I mean, maybe that <laughs> would be necessary, but hopefully not. Um, so like extracting out the details of like how we're actually talking to the back end from this component uh, in general is going to make sense. All right, and so I'm going to make a storybook story here as well so we can kind of interact with this. 
and see it working and then figure out what it will look like and then I can drop it into the uh, the front end as well. So let's see. chat dialogue. Dot. Is it story or stories? There we go. Now, I don't remember how this is supposed to go, so I'm just gonna steal uh, something that works from one of my other stories and then replace timeline with chat dialogue. That's gonna get me most of the way there, except for all the places it's wrong. Okay, all the arg type stuff is wrong. Args are wrong. Uh, I think it's, it's probably good to remove all of the bad information <laughs> before letting um, Copilot try to suggest things because otherwise it may use some of the wrong things and what it's providing so yeah on chat is a function on change is a function job transcript context are all strings that looks right to me uh we can have default args uh which should mean that for our empty story we can just do this and then i should be able to start storybook Bam. Yeah. It's still loading. Right? If I reload this, then it's fine. Yeah. Hey, look! It is a chat dialogue. <laughs> uh, let's see. So if I type test and send, messages is undefined. All right. So this is this is why we test. All right. And I'm also done with the... Uh, I don't think I need anything else from over here. Oh, this is cool. Um, right, so in my in my old component, I was using mock service workers. So if we wanted to have a component that had like the networking stuff built in, the calling to the back end, you know, you can do stuff like this to mock that, but we, we don't need this. All right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, chat dialogue, line 46. 46 is where I, maybe it's actually this line. Messages is undefined. Messages is undefined. Messages? Aha, messages. because I clicked the send button. So messages is undefined. Why is that the case? It shouldn't be. Right, it's initially this array. How could messages be undefined? Slice doesn't mutate the, uh, yeah, it returns a copy of the section of an array. But it doesn't mutate messages. And if it did, it would still be an array. I thought it went rock, boy. Are we... And we're not shadowing messages either. Um... That is interesting. Well, let's, uh... Let's, let's take a look at what's going on here. We find the component. Uh, that is a lot. Do I have a version that is not? <laughs> This is chat dialogue at TSX, but no source map found. Interesting. Um, oh, 
odd. That is strange. See, this one says maps, right? So when we look at this, we get the, the TypeScript before it's compiled. Uh, this one, no source map found, that's odd. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, okay, let's do this a different way then, since the debugger is not gonna be so helpful. Let's go back over here and can we see No, I mean, that's that's a good guess for what I might want to log, but there we go. So, I mean, presumably this should be like messages undefined or something. Messages is undefined. Here it wasn't, here it's an array. And then here it's undefined. <laughs> Messages that slice. Okay, well we found the, the line of code anyway. Oh, I see, messages up here. So it's not interesting. It's not it's not coming from the uh, event handler. It's happening here. Where do we call set messages and why? Ah, I see. So, we say that send messages is supposed to return a promise of an array of chat message, but it doesn't. In our story, we uh, we lie. We have a function, and uh, no, no, no. It this function uh, does not do what we claim it's supposed to do. And that's a problem for this actually working. Can we can we pass? Um, how does this fn thing work? Okay, we can pass an implementation. Okay, so I'm gonna do like messages. Yeah, there we go. So that should make it not fail. Voila. Right, and if I do that, it just accumulates messages. And we can see in actions as well, on chat, when our, our callback function is being called. Um, what we can't see demonstrated here is when the system returns a message, right? So if we did another story, Uh, with messages, sure. How would this work? Like we can't bake in initial messages, like the 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 like the the messages state inside of the the component is isolated. It's opaque to the outside world until we call a callback to send it out. So how can we get? this to um, right we need a message where the role is assistant to be able to have this button and that's what I'm trying to drive at is to have a scenario in which a story in which this button is available uh, let's see On chat we'll do this but instead of returning messages what we're gonna do is we're gonna return yep there we go like that and like that yes so that way when uh, except of course this has to be a promise actually it should be a promise because it's the async function. 
Uh, right, but it should be. Wait, type promise content role array. Okay. Content role. Content role. What is the type again? Yeah, function assistant system user. Content is a string. What's the problem? Ah. There we go. So without the as cons, the type of role in this object is just a string, right? It doesn't know that the string is some, I'm, I'm <laughs> it, it doesn't know. Can't see that far ahead. Okay, so now if I go to with messages and I send a message, then I can use this message and then on change is assistant message as many times as I click the button. Okay, so that's the functionality. Like that, that is all of what this chat GPT style UI needs to be in terms of it working. Uh, except for the part where we have to like tie it into calling our API that actually is then calling the open AI API and doing the work. Um, so let's do this. Let's, uh, let's work a little bit on styling just a little bit and then we can go from there to working on wiring it up to the back end and uh, integrating it into the, uh, the actual application. So how do I want this to work? I think I want to use a material UI dialog Let's, for now. It's not exactly what I had in mind. I had more of a, like, you know, the, you see them on websites where they pop up and there's a, like a little support chat thing. So I was thinking something like that because it's kind of out of the way so you can still see the content. I wonder, um, let's see, Ooh, docs. Material you want, there we go. Components. What kind of options do we have for dialogues? Yeah, dialogue, parent component. Dialogue title, dialogue actions, dialogue content, content text. Slide, optional transition, used to slide the dialogue in from the edge of the screen. Neat. Okay, so can we... Let's look at the API. So part of the uh, kind of the, the interface, right, for the dialogue is this open prop. I think we're probably going to add that to this as well. So we're going to mirror that. Like so. Uh, let's see, full screen, full width, max width. Is there an easy way? Probably, probably not. <laughs> it's probably not an easy way to like force it to the side of the screen. Okay, so let's just do things. Uh, let's see. Yep. Open should be open. So we don't have that right now because we're not looking for that. Um, let's see, I want to use that. 
so I don't like I don't want my uh, React import to be at the top here. And then um, I'm just gonna call it chat title, like for now. Uh, and then it's what? It's dialogue content. Yeah, something like that, except for it. Ooh, that is a good point. We really, yeah, stand by. Um, like this, this bit right here, we could pull into a sub component. Uh, chat uh, message. Sure. And that. And that. Uh, I, some stuff up here is wrong that's that's messing with things, but just ignore that for a second. Um, oh, that's not necessary. That's not necessary. And then... Do something like dot, 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 props, and then we need that on change. So let's do this. Let's say, yeah, something like that. And at some point, this will all actually be valid once I fix the stuff up above. Yeah, but I think that's that's a good start, right? So now this is just a chat message. Oh right. Um we need a better name. <laughs> uh right, because the there's also there's a type called chat message. Right? So we can't call this component chat message and call it um Uh, chat message view, for lack of a better, cleverer name. Okay. So that does that. And then that's dialog content. Nope. There we go. And then dialog actions is a thing. There you go. And that will be wrapping the form. And this will be the overall dialogue closed. And then we just need to import all the things. Is that all of them? Seems like it. No more red squigglies in here. Uh, and then this is complaining because... Some, oh right, so we have a new arg called open. Boolean, and we'll just default that to being true so that our stories are visible. There we go, and now we have a chat dialog. It's slightly better. It's slightly better. Okay. Um, and then. Then what? We're going to swap out the button in the text area, I guess, to be material UI ones. Let's try something different. Replace. The text area. With uh, a. Let's see how it does on this. I've had mixed results. Um, that's, that's not fair. I've had pretty good results. Hey, and it did a button too. Um, that seems fine. Yeah, we don't know what event is because we've not imported text area and such. Or text field. Uh, oh, good now. All right, so now we have this interface. I actually like it better. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, and then that leaves doing a similar thing here. But I mean, this is uh, very similar to just the native element. Is that a thing? That's that is a thing. All right, sweet. And I could do things here like using uh, uh, paper, using typography. Hmm, maybe I will. Or there might be a different appropriate uh, material UI component to use here, but this is fine. This gets us a thing that doesn't look terrible that um, we can use. I think another thing I want to do here is um, for the send button, I want to disable this if message content is empty. Uh, yeah, that could also be good. Disabled. If no message content. There we go. And so if I delete that, there we go. It's not sent. Okay. The contained variant now doesn't look great because it, it doesn't have padding around the button. There we go. So that looks better. Even though it's it's not any <laughs> it's it's still a budding, but it's not as obvious. Uh, if I cared more, I would adjust padding. But that's fine. Okay, so that gets us a UI element. Now, how do I want a, how do I want to approach integrating this into the actual application? Right. So somewhere in here, I want to have the ability to uh, click a button that opens that dialog. And eventually, like when you um, click use this message, the dialog goes away and the target field is updated with the result. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component. Um, yeah. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Uh, I'm just going to create a new file. I'm, I'm not going to worry about the, the organization of the components. It's starting to feel a little inconsistent, a little, <laughs> there, there is some need for organization. I'm just not going to deal with it yet. We're gonna have a chat dialog input. Maybe, maybe a um, maybe a chat button. Maybe a chat field button. I'm just gonna make a chat button. Just, <laughs> just. Uh, okay, so, whoops. Oh, good, that didn't do anything anyway. Uh, okay, so we're gonna make a const chat button. Yep, and yeah, you could imagine there could be like a hook and, and stuff could happen, but that's not, that's not what we're doing. And we're gonna export default. Okay, so that is gonna get us part of the way there. Uh, and then, let's see, import uh, button, but, yeah, button from React to Admin. Yep, just for consistency sake of nothing else. I'm not, I mean, there's definitely things inside of this button component that are not part of the like material UI button. Like there's some defaults and stuff and some behaviors. And over, right, so the main thing, well, a thing 
It has a different API than the material UI button, but it also does translation. If you pass a, um, if you pass a label that has like a translation ID instead of the actual label. So there are behaviors there that are nice. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna, we're gonna just return a button called chat. Yeah, except this, the API in this doesn't need a child. There we go. And we're not doing anything yet. Like there's, there's two layers of integration here. So we're gonna integrate the, uh, the, the UI here with this and this with the chat dialogue. So should be good. Um, let's go over to resources. Episodes, edit, and under description. I mean, I could, I could make this chat GPT style like dialogue thing, something that appears in every, every one. But I don't think I want to do that. Part of what's going to be an issue here is going to be that we are going to need to pull out information from the episode to pass in as context for this. And this is going to be like very, ooh. So here's what we do, maybe. I'm going to do a um, function. Um, there is no function input. <laughs> There's a function field, but you don't put fields in a simple form. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, do we need to like, I think we need like a third level for this to make sense in my head, right? So we need like a, a description, like a episode description chat button yeah and this is going to be very hard coder anyway so i'm not going to bother port, like uh, passing in a source ah uh, we'll do it might as well This just uses the chat button and we're not going to pass in a source a thing that we'll need to do yeah, there, we go. there we go now we have a chat button that's again i'm not too worried about styling so this gets us like gets all the layers connected together so the idea will be click this um, this component is going to have the ability to access the record and be able to like pull in associated data since we're not already going to have everything loaded because not everything is about uh, like inside of the episode record. We're going to have to pull the associated stream as well um, and pull that information in. And then that's going to build the context that's needed and chat button to be passed in to the chat dialogue because it has all these things. So uh, there's a few things we need to do, right? So like the job. So like this interface is fine. I don't think we need to pass anything here. So the question is like, where do we start passing in uh, the different props? And I, I think a lot is getting passed into chat button. So a lot of the interface for chat dialogue props, specifically job transcript and context. Um, and then on chat on change. Some of that is gonna happen inside of chat button and some of that is going to happen inside of here. Yeah, so 
Let's uh let's let's make an interface. None of those things. Like there's gonna be an on change. Yep. And then what else? So like these things need to be passed in. Right, so this button doesn't understand specifically what it's being used for, but we will be responsible for calling the API. Call data provider to send message. Uh, and we what else? Okay, well, I'll think about that. I'm gonna take a little break, get some water, and I'll be back in a couple minutes with some more. BRB.